This is the actual transmitter for Samuel Morse's first telegraph. Code slugs, representing letters in a message, were put in place. When a crank was turned, the slugs moved under a lever, raising and lowering the other end to act as a switch. It sent the code by interrupting a current from a battery in short and long pulses. The signals traveled from the transmitter through wire to the receiver. Here, the pulses turn this electromagnet on and off, both pulling and releasing a lever. A pencil on the bottom of the lever recorded the code on a moving paper tape. This is how Morse code originally looked. This is an 1850 key-operated telegraph transmitter. Keying interrupted the battery current, sending long and short electrical pulses to a receiver. For long distance, a telegraphy relay was used. It received the original electrical pulses and retransmitted the signal with increased power. Miles away, the electrical pulses arrived at the receiver and caused an electromagnetic device to emboss dots and dashes onto a moving paper tape. David Hughes' telegraph used letters instead of Morse code. In this patent model, pressing a key on the transmitter moved a vertical arm that pushed a metal feeler from its resting place into the path of pins and a rotating drum. When these pins made contact with the feeler, they sent a pulse of electricity to a receiver, which was synchronized with the transmitter. There, a magnet pulled the correct letters against the tape. Alexander Graham Bell's first successful voice transmission was made over an instrument similar to this reproduction. In it, a needle moved in response to sound waves produced by a voice they changed the amount of contact with salt water and thus the amount of current flowing through the needle. Sound waves of the voice were reproduced as variations in electrical current, but the current also caused the water to decompose, producing unwanted static. To solve the problem, Bell created an induction transmitter. It worked by moving a membrane that induced varying electric current in a coil. At the receiver, the fluctuating current caused another membrane to move back and forth, reproducing the original sound. 